Hey sugar geeks, do you hate dishes? Me too. So today I'm gonna show you how to make the easiest vanilla cake recipe using only one bowl. Okay, so first let's go ahead and measure out our wet ingredients. I'm gonna place my bowl onto the scale. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure this is on ounces. Unless you like grams, then you can use grams. Press the zero or tear button to say, ignore this bowl. A very important thing to note is that your cold ingredients need to be a little bit warm so that they don't curdle and not rise properly. We're making an emulsion, okay? So your eggs, after I crack them, I'll place this whole container into a bowl of hot water. And when you touch them, they should feel a little bit warm. Make sure your butter is melted. And same thing with your buttermilk. I microwave mine until it just feels just a little bit warm. I've got 10 ounces of buttermilk. If you don't have buttermilk, check out my recipe for how to make your own buttermilk. Press zero, four ounces of melted butter, and then three whole eggs, large size, five ounces of a neutral oil like canola, vegetable, grapeseed, any of those will do. I'm doing two teaspoons of a clear vanilla because I wanna keep this cake as white as possible, but you could also use a natural vanilla or like a vanilla bean paste or a vanilla bean pod. And then I'm just gonna give that a little whisk to just combine those ingredients together. Now, if any of these ingredients were cold, you would know because they would be all separated and chunky looking. Now, if that happens, you can take this whole bowl, put it over the top of a, a pot of simmering water and just whisk until those ingredients come together. So now let's go ahead and measure out the dry ingredients with the scale the same way. Now, I already know you guys are gonna ask me what this recipe is in cups, and I promise you, you will have so much better results if you invest in a scale for not only this recipe, but all your baking recipes. And if you're getting into making cakes, you're definitely gonna wanna get a scale. Any kitchen scale you get from Target, Amazon, anywhere is gonna work for you. I'll put a link to my blog post in the description below this video. And while you're down there, you might as well go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ding the little bell because I know you wanna get more recipes like this one. All right, 16 ounces of all-purpose flour, not self-rising or cake, zero. And 16 ounces of just regular granulated sugar. And you might be like, yeah, that's a lot of sugar. Well, sugar is a tenderizer and is gonna be one of the things that makes this cake's texture very smooth and velvety and delicious. All right, one teaspoon of salt, and then one teaspoon of baking soda, and then one half teaspoon of baking powder. I'm gonna go ahead and attach my paddle attachment to my stand mixer. And then while mixing on low, I'm just gonna start streaming in my liquid ingredients. You can do this in one bowl. You don't have to separate your ingredients. You could literally just add all the wet into the dry and mix for one minute, but you will get a little bit of a finer texture if you separate the, out the two. You could mix in one bowl by hand. You could mix in your KitchenAid. You could mix in your Bosch. I'm telling you, it's easy vanilla cake. Go ahead and scrape your bowl. Just make sure you're getting all of those ingredients mixed together. And now we're just gonna mix this for about one minute on speed two. The reason why this easy one bowl vanilla cake recipe works is because of the buttermilk. Buttermilk is such an amazing ingredient that actually breaks down the gluten in the protein in the flour. So that's why we're using all purpose flour instead of cake flour because we actually need a little bit of that structure to hold the cake together. But the buttermilk comes in and is like, don't develop too much and makes a nice tender velvety cake. After about one minute, your cake batter should look a little bit lighter, thick, kind of like pancake batter. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and use our homemade pan release. This is my cake goop, super easy, equal parts flour, shortening and oil. And just mix until it makes a paste and this makes the cakes come out super easy. Of course, you can use whatever pan release you like to use, but we're going for easy, you guys, and cheap. You don't have to do a thick coating, but if you happen to make a cake that's like a quarter sheet pan or 10 inches and larger, I would probably recommend using parchment paper just in case. The cake cools a little bit differently in larger cake sizes and the parchment paper just like helps it come out better. I like to use magic line pans because it just makes the edges, it keeps them really like light colored. Now we're gonna divide our batter between the two. And just for fun, I like to test myself to see how even the two layers are with the scale because I have competitions with myself for no reason. Two pounds, four ounces. <laughs> 
two pounds, three and a half ounces. I detected a half an ounce difference, you guys. All right, let's bake these babies up. So we're gonna bake these in the oven at 335 degrees Fahrenheit for about 40 minutes, or until the toothpick comes out nice and clean. So we're gonna let these cool uh, in the pan for about 10 minutes and then flip them out onto a cooling rack. Now I wanna frost these right away, so I'm gonna place them into the freezer for about an hour, or you can wrap them while they're still warm in plastic wrap and freeze them and that locks in the moisture and then you could just defrost them for about an hour before you use them. You do not have to wrap them if you're going to be frosting them right away. Okay, let's make our easy buttercream. Emphasis on the easy. We're gonna start off with pasteurized egg whites. These come in a box, super easy to measure out. You can use whole eggs if you wanna separate the egg whites from the egg yolks. Maybe try out my Swiss meringue buttercream or Italian buttercream recipe instead. Six ounces of egg whites. 24 ounces of powdered sugar. And we wanna whisk this until it looks like royal icing. This will help dissolve the powdered sugar so it doesn't get grainy. If you want to color your buttercream, I would suggest putting your food coloring in now. Uh, there's no oil in here yet, so it will color it a lot easier. Whereas when you add in the butter, it has to fight against all of the oil. You got water-based food coloring and butter. So if you color it now, it's a lot easier. So you wanna let this mix for about four to five minutes or until it's shiny. The reason why we mix our sugar-based ingredients until they're shiny, like brownies, or in this case, buttercream, is because the shine means the sugar has dissolved. If it's still dull, your sugar's not dissolved and it's gonna taste grainy. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my vanilla. You can use clear if you want that flavor or you want less color. And don't forget your salt because we're not using salted butter. Now we're gonna start adding in our softened butter, one chunk at a time, mixing on low. Once all your butter is added in there, you can bump it up to max speed until it's nice and light and white and creamy. The reason why some people think that it tastes like butter is they don't whip it enough. So you've gotta make sure that you whip your buttercream enough. It should taste like melted ice cream, not butter. So when your buttercream makes this hole in the center and looks like cottage cheese on the outside, that's normal. It's saying, burr, it's cold in here. There must be some sugar. No, I'm just kidding. So what we're gonna do is take out about a third of this, melt it in the microwave until it's just barely melted, add it back in, and that's going to warm everything up. All right, so our buttercream visually is looking like some delicious butter but I can tell by the look of it, it's still really yellow and therefore it will taste like butter. So you just wanna keep whipping this until it looks whiter. It's not gonna look super white, but whiter. All right, you guys, this is what we're looking for. It's not pure white, but it's just much whiter, nice and light. And then really the only way to truly know if it's done whipping is to taste it. Delicious, it tastes light, creamy, not buttery at all. Perfect. And now we're going to tone our buttercream with purple food coloring, just like you would tone your hair if you bleached it and it was too yellow. Yes, this is amazing. My favorite trick, right? Okay, so I'm gonna take a little scoopy scoop here. You can see before, a tiny dot, the tiniest dot. Use a toothpick. You can always add more if you need to. I'm using Chef Master Purple, which is the perfect tone. You don't wanna use bright purple, or you can use violet. And we're gonna mix. Okay. Yes, this looks beautiful. All right, check this out, guys. This is slightly yellower and this is wider, and I don't know if you can tell. Now, if you wanted this to be even wider, you could add a little bit of white food coloring, but then if you add too much, it gets kind of gritty and grainy and starts doing weird things. Okay, so now that our buttercream is beautiful and light and white and creamy, we're gonna mix on low with a paddle attachment. Totally, totally optional. This just kind of gets the bubbles out of it so it's super smooth and creamy. And if you have a little extra buttercream like leftover from another batch, ideally it's great if the buttercream is covering the paddle because then you're not gonna incorporate any air. All right, when it's really smooth and shiny like this, it's all done. So these are now cold enough that I can trim them and we can start stacking our vanilla cake. Now I'm going to trim all of the brown edges off of my cake. You do not have to do this, especially if you're doing something like a naked cake where you're gonna be seeing the edges on purpose. I just like to trim the edges because I think it looks nicer and I'm a blogger, but at home, you don't have to do this. So I'm just gonna take my knife and just run just under that top 
I call it the skin, which is weird, but you know what I mean. <laughs> what would you call this? Tell me in the comments. Is this cake skin or is this crust? What is this? If you're wondering if I have an easy chocolate version, you're in luck. Click the link above. And don't worry, we're not losing any of the cake by doing this. It's such a small amount. It's not gonna make a difference. All right, so now I have my eight inch cake board that I'm gonna stack my layers onto. Or if you don't have a cake board, you could just stack this right onto a platter, preferably flat, you know, makes it easier for frosting, but honestly, it doesn't matter. Who thinks that I will be able to frost this rough and not smooth at first. <laughs> I just can't do it, you guys. And then we're gonna smooth out that buttercream. We're going for about a half inch thick because this is only a two layer cake, so you want a lot of buttercream in between, otherwise the ratio is gonna be off. Oh my God, that looks so good. So smooth and white and pretty. It was worth all that extra mixing. Second layer on top. If you want to get into making wedding cakes or stacking multiple tiers, this is a great cake to start off with. It's very soft and moist, but still sturdy enough to stack. You can cover it in fondant, you can use ganache. Pretty much anything is gonna work with this type of cake. It's so versatile. So you might be wondering uh, what the difference between vanilla cake and a white cake is, and really the only difference is the use of egg yolks. Uh, if you use no egg yolks, it's a white cake. If you use whole eggs, it's a vanilla cake. And if you add extra egg yolks, it's a yellow cake. I'm just gonna scrape off that extra buttercream around the top, and then we're gonna pop this into the freezer for 15 minutes, and then we'll do our final coat. All right, our cake has been chilled. And now I'm gonna place my final coat of buttercream. And this is what I like to do. I like to start with the top and make it nice and flat. This is called Pet the Kitty. Pet the Kitty, nice and soft. Unless you don't like cats, then it's Pet the Puppy. <laughs> and then we're gonna apply some buttercream to the side. Nice and thick, you don't have to worry about what it looks like. We're just trying to get a nice thick layer. And you can see it's going right up against that cake board, so that's how I know how thick to make it. Okay, so this is where I use my bench scraper. Got this one at the dollar store. I like the one with the circle, the little curl right here because you lay it nice and flat and that way you don't accidentally make your cake crooked. And just scrape. And I can see very easily where any holes are that I need to fill in. If you don't have a um, bench scraper, you could use a ruler. You could just use like a piece of acetate. One more scrape. And now I have nice straight edges. And I'm gonna wipe off the excess, going from the edge and scraping towards the center. All right, so now that my cake is perfect, now I'm gonna pretend like I'm gonna ice it rustically, but it's also perfect. <laughs> so I'm gonna start in the center and do a little spiral and work my way out towards the edge. And then with my spatula, I'm gonna add some buttercream in little swoops. We'll see. And because we spent all that extra time making sure our buttercream was really smooth and bubble free, it just looks really nice. Okay, so now I'm gonna add some buttercream to a piping bag with a 1M piping tip. You can use any kind of tip you want, or don't, you can skip this part if you want. So I'm gonna show you guys how to get all of your little dollops of buttercream perfectly spaced. You start with the spot right in front, make a little swirl, and then make this so it's right in front of you, right in front, and then equally between the two. I always pipe in the same spot so that all the swirls look the same. I'm gonna put two in between and that is how you get perfectly spaced swirls. I'll put one in the center too. And to me, no vanilla cake is complete without some sprinkles. Happy confetti sprinkles. This looks so good. All right, let's dig into this. Ooh, I can already tell it's super moist. Mmm, that is everything I think of when I think of birthday cake. Perfect. I'm Liz and I will see you in the next video. Bye. A very
your pan your pancake batter. I always say it like this. Mmm, delicious. I just choked on it. <clears throat> Today I'm going to show you how to. <laughs> That's definitely gotta be a blooper at the end. Yeah. <laughs>